All right, let's review more on proportional relationships. This is going to be on unit rates to graphs and also unit rates to equations. Now, let's review what a unit rate is. It's the kind of rate where the denominator is 1. $25 per hour means $25 for every 1 hour, or $25 over 1 hour, written as a fraction. So let's apply that to a graph. $25 per hour means $25 for every 1 hour. Well, if you go to the graph when x is 1, and you take a look at the point that would be at that location, Notice what the y value is. It is 25. This is the idea, $25 for every one hour, or $25 per hour. Let's apply it to this problem. It says find the unit rate. Okay, we go to where x is 1, because a unit rate always means for every one of something. The dot at that location has the y value of 10. Now, what does that 10 actually mean? That is 10 students for every one chaperone. So the ordered pair was 1 comma 10 that we went to. But as I just said, looking at the labels, it was 10 students for every one chaperone. Or in other words, you could say 10 students per chaperone. That is your unit rate. I would like to tell you that sometimes you will hear unit rate being called the constant of proportionality. A fancy phrase, but that is something that we sometimes use as a synonym for the word unit rate. Now, the other part of this video I want to explain is how you can write an equation for a proportional relationship using its unit rate. Here's the general format, y equals kx, which really means k times x. Now, what do these letters mean? Well, the k, as you see I highlighted for you, is the unit rate. So that's going to actually be a number, whether it was the 25 from the first graph I showed you for $25 per hour, or maybe it was the 10 for the 10 students per chaperone from the second graph. Whatever the unit rate's number is, that is what the k will end up being. And then the x and the y, they are just variables. y is technically called the dependent variable, x is called the independent variable. You don't really need to know those terms, independent and dependent, really, for the purposes of this video. Just know that they are going to be letters. Any letter that makes sense to choose for the situation that you're dealing with. Let me show you some examples. Now, before I do, here's what you need to understand. We keep talking about unit rates having the word per. Well, they could sometimes have the word each or the phrase for every. Those words can refer to multiplication. And this is going to tie into how we do the equation. So from the first example I showed you, where the graph showed $25 per hour as the unit rate, per hour means times the hours. And so the way you can use that is 25 per hour means 25 times the hours. Call the hours h. That's 25 times h. And since the pay was 25 per hour, we can say that the pay equals 25 times the hours. Let's look at some more examples. If the tickets cost $22 per ticket, notice if it's per ticket, that means times the tickets. So that would be 22 times T, and what does that equal? Well, we're talking about what the tickets cost, so that equals our variable C. Notice the 22 is the unit rate, and we have two variables, C for the cost of the tickets, T for the number of tickets that are being purchased. Here's another example. It rained 0.25 inches per hour. If it's per hour, that means times the hours, which is why the 0.25 is times to the letter H for the number of hours. So we picked R, or we could have picked I, for the inches of rain that we had following. And so let's look at one more example. It says the level of water rose three feet in 20 minutes. Part A says to find the unit rate in feet per minute. Part B says to write an equation relating to the level of water, called W, in feet, to the amount of time, called T, in minutes. As I've taught you before, we need to pay attention to the order of the unit rate. Part A, feet per minute. The feet is first, the minutes are second. And that will lead to the correct order of the way that you set up your work. So feet is first. We have three feet. That's our numerator. Per minute, the minutes are second. So the 20 minutes will be our denominator. As a division problem in your calculator, the numerator is first, the denominator is second. That's the order you will type it in. And when you divide, this will give you the feet per minute. 0.15 feet per minute. So we got our unit rate. 
Now that we have our unit rate, we can write our equation. Now they're telling us to pick W instead of F. That's the level of water in feet. And they're asking us to pick T instead of M for the time in minutes. So the question you got to ask yourself is, what's the correct order for your equation? Is the W first and then 0.15 times T? Or is the T first and then the 0.15 times W? How do we know what's the correct order to do this in? Go back to your units of measure in your unit rate. It's per minute, which means times the minutes. Which equation has the 0.15 times to the minutes? Well, it's the first one. That was the 0.15 times t. Remember, that's our time in minutes. So that's the correct order. Since the unit rate was per minute, it's got to be times to the minutes. And that makes the equation that we have circled.